Hey, what's going on friends and theme park fans? This is Silver Sticks here for another Sticks Top 6 where I count down the best and worst that theme parks have to offer. Alrighty folks, yes, finally after three long months of me dealing with some real life stuff and getting everything back on track, Styx Top 6 is officially back online and better than ever, and I figured because of the long hiatus, I should totally come back on a high note and bring you guys part 3 of the fan favorite Top 6 Best Walt Disney World Rides. Of course, across parts 1 and 2, I've already counted down 12 different rides, plus an honorable mention for both, so this episode will actually be covering numbers 13 through 18 technically, with an honorable mention as well. Just in case you're new around here and we're confused, as to why a top six has three episodes. <laughs> Disney World just has too many great rides to list in just one top six, so yeah, that's how we ended up here. <laughs> but regardless, I'm really just glad to be back, guys, so without wasting any more of your time, let's just go ahead and jump right in to today's epic countdown. Kicking off our list today, we'll be setting sail for Adventureland, where we'll be able to find the world-famous Jungle Cruise. Yes, the very same one that has a home in nearly every single Disney park, a well-deserved home at that, because, well, it's amazing. <laughs> I mean, really, what's not to love about it? The skippers always bring a burst of happiness and positive energy to any trip to the park, and their hilarious cheesy jokes always have me cracking up throughout the whole ride even when nobody else is laughing. <laughs> the animatronic figures, while not being the absolute most impressive things to ever exist, still definitely have a quaintness and charm to them that can't easily be matched, especially the elephants and the boa constrictor, I just think they are so cool. <laughs> So take all of what I just said and throw it on top of an already relaxing and picturesque boat ride with huge nostalgia vibes, and by golly you've absolutely got yourself one incredibly impressive, timeless ride that nobody should miss out on, on any visit to Adventureland. Let's just hope none of us end up like these folks after we hop on board though. <laughs> Alrighty gang, for this next one, if anyone's wearing any hats or glasses, you best remove them, because we're going to be stepping into Frontierland to take a trip through Big Thunder Mountain, the wildest ride in the wilderness. This roughly three minute steel roller coaster is a total fan favorite and staple of the Disney parks. It runs at 35 miles per hour with a maximum height of 104 feet in the air. But don't let that scare you off if you're afraid of heights at all. The hills actually feel way smaller than they are because the train doesn't really pick up any speed until it's completely gone over the edge. Then it speeds up as you just sort of wind around the unbelievably well themed track. <laughs> Speaking of theming, you may actually even hear some like dynamite explosions going off while you're racing around because there's actually detonators in the queue that people can press to give you a scare as your train passes by. It's super funny and it adds to the immersion just that much more. Honestly, Big Thunder Mountain is just a great ride for the whole family. There's really nothing to fear with it, it's a great beginner coaster for newer riders, and for coaster professionals, it's still just a ton of fun to ride through and zip around. It's a definite must-do if the line is short enough, and I just simply cannot recommend it enough. Making the jump into hyperspace, we'll be able to travel over to the planet of Batu in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, where we can help out Hondo Onaka smuggle some coaxium in the almighty Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. The ride that literally gives you the opportunity of a lifetime to take a seat in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon as either a pilot, gunner, or engineer, depending on which of these roles you get chosen for, the ride experience will vary and differ quite a bit, but the overall all immersion of being inside the Falcon will remain the same for everyone. And when I say immersion, I really mean this is some next level transforming of the world in front of you into the world of Star Wars. 
For instance, if you fail or just perform really poorly on Smuggler's Run, as you leave the cockpit, the walls will be all cracked and torched and wires will be sparking up and whatnot. It's a great little touch that makes it so even if you fail the ride, you still get a little consolation prize of absolute Star Wars immersion. <laughs> the ride itself lasts just about four and a half minutes, and it usually doesn't have the longest line in history, as surprising as that is. I assume it's because it's a simulator in a park alongside Rock and Roller Coaster and Tower of Terror and Slinky Dog and so on and so forth, but still, I think Millennium Falcon is more than worth the wait for anyone visiting Hollywood studios. It's quite literally out of this world. Hi-ho, digging our way back to the Magic Kingdom, specifically Fantasyland, where we'll be able to find the one and only Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. This charming little Vacoma steel coaster at first glance seems like nothing more than a fun old minecart ride with nothing else to it, really. But once you walk inside the queue, you'll see just how wrong that notion truly is as you experience the highly immersive, highly ambitious, and highly amusing games and activities that they have laid out for people of all ages to enjoy before you even reach the ride cart, and that's just where the fun begins. Once you've actually entered the cart and taken off on your adventure, you'll find an extremely fun coaster ride, with an indoor section featuring some of Disney's most impressive animatronic figures to date. The ride lasts about 2 minutes and 50 seconds, and it features a max speed of 34 miles per hour. It usually has the longest wait out of any ride in the Magic Kingdom, but I still find myself coming back to it on most visits to the park. You definitely won't regret it if you do decide to wait the probably 2 hours or so you'll have to wait for this absolute masterpiece of a ride. Making our way back to Hollywood Studios, right in the heart of Hollywood Boulevard, we'll come across the massive Chinese theater, which today houses Walt Disney World's newest attraction, at the time of recording this, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. And cool little tidbit about this attraction, it's actually the first ride in all of Disney's history to actually be based on Mickey Mouse, so... It's really pretty gosh darn historic, but Mickey fans can definitely rejoice and rest easy. The mouse has been done justice for sure. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is flat out incredible on so many levels. It's a trackless dark ride that lasts just around five minutes, and it uses some brand new technology Imagineers came up with called 2.5D, which engrosses you right in the world of a Mickey Mouse cartoon without any use of 3D glasses or anything. It's frankly beyond words, and genuinely feels like magic before your eyes. And from a totally non-technical standpoint, the ride is just a ton of fun. Each room you go into is so vivid and creative, it's seriously unreal. Real. My personal favorites are Daisy's Ballroom and the Rootin' Tootin' Wild West, but honestly, the entire experience from start to finish is just a rush of good energy and fun. And the trackless feature makes so you'll have a slightly altered perspective each and every time you give this ride a whirl, giving even more incentive to hop aboard Goofy's train on any and every single visit to Disney's Hollywood Studios. Alrighty folks, for our honorable mention today, we'll be cruising over to Epcot over in the Land Pavilion where we can take a relaxing boat ride on one of my all-time personal favorite Disney rides, Living with the Land. And I chose this one as the honorable mention today because I realize it's super educational and the ride lasts 20 minutes and it's very slow moving, so if you're just not feeling it, then you're gonna be bored out of your mind, I'm sorry. <laughs> However, I know for a fact that there are people like me out there that love learning about every last Disney detail there is, and Living with the Land does just that by taking you through Epcot's very own greenhouses while providing you with information on conservation throughout all of Walt Disney World. And personally, I even just like seeing all the weird plants, fruits, and vegetables that they have set up, and the strange ways that they have them growing. I just think it's cool. <laughs> and even besides all the educational hoobla 
Aww. There's still like eight minutes or so, possibly, of straight fun dark ride action through all sorts of interesting and fun settings and climates. I don't know, I'm not sure why Living with the Land gets such a bad rep in general. If you ask me, it's beyond worth a ride or two on every trip to Epcot. I mean, the line is always unbelievably short, so there is seriously just no excuse to miss this one. I promise you, it's worth it. Don't believe what anybody says. Trust Silver Sticks. It's a good ride. Soaring on over to Batu once again for our number one best ride today, where we can join the fight against Kylo Ren on the absolute unit of a ride, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. Simply put, this is Disney's most technologically advanced attraction to date. The animatronic figures, the screen tech, the lighting, the trackless ride vehicles, the set itself, guys, I swear to you, every last detail about this ride adds together to form one intense, lifelike, and magical experience unlike anything you could ever possibly imagine. And I'm telling you, the video just doesn't do this one justice at all. Seeing all of this unfold before your very eyes is just a sight to behold. It's seriously beyond surreal. It genuinely feels like you took a trip to space and came in contact with the First Order. And even though getting a boarding pass is a little odd on the app, and it can be kind of annoying honestly, it's still worth it. Everyone just needs to find some way to get aboard this ride if you can. It's absolutely life-changing how amazing it is. With the pre-show, queue, and ride all added up, the entire experience lasts just under 20 minutes, which is just remarkable. Disney truly outdid themselves with this one. Rise of the Resistance is the sheer definition of immersion, and you'd be insane to miss out on it with any chance you get. It is in just two simple words. Unmatched perfection. Alrighty folks, so that'll about wrap up today's Sticks Top 6 Best Walt Disney World Rides Part 3. I really hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like, comment, subscribe, and share the video around. It'd mean a lot and help out a ton. And also, leave in the comments what your favorite rides are currently at Walt Disney World, or maybe just any Disney-related memories you'd like to share so we can start a conversation down there. But anyway, gang, with all that being said, this is your host with the most, Silver Sticks, signing out. I hope you have a great rest of your day, theme park fans. I'll see you next time. Peace.